Alhamdulillah, did you just put us live? Yes, we are live. Oh. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlil ukhdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamu alaikum to everyone tuning in. And assalamu alaikum to Sheikh Mikdad. Uh, how are you, Sheikh? Alaikum. Thank you very much, Alhamdulillah. Thank you to you. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, thank you. Um, just before we start, um, we in the past recent in the recent weeks we lost a very influential person in our community uh, by the name of Sayyid Hassan Nakvi, who was a an amazing person and uh, an amazing servant to the Quran. He pushed us to become better and better and better at Quran and always held the the Quran competition with a smile on his face. So before we start, let's uh, have a Surah Fatiha for Sayyid Hassan Al-Fatiha. Okay. Welcome to Sheikh again, Sheikh Mikdad. Um, and welcome to the Bloom series. Um, this is going to be the series we're going to be running throughout Rajab as AYN. And first up, we're going to start with Sheikh Mikdad today discussing what I let him introduce and go on with, inshallah. Right. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjal faraj. All right, so um, a couple of rules of the game before we start. Um, I like to make this um, an interactive session. So um, I hope I won't be speaking um, the full 45 minutes. Um, and inshallah, I'm hoping that um, Irfan over here will be um, interrupting me, will be um, asking questions. And I hope the listeners, the brothers and sisters who are listening um, will be um, sending their questions, their feedbacks, uh, and we wanted to do this together, basically. So this is the first point. The second point is that there's a lot to discuss, um, and it's an important question as well that we're trying to discuss. Mm -hmm. And so I want everybody to take part and share uh, how they feel, and also um, allow the discussion to go where they feel it's important, um, because obviously we can't discuss everything in the time frame that we have right now. Uh, perhaps because it's a Bloom series and um, if it goes well today and uh, the brothers over here don't fire me after the show today, then uh, we can carry on, inshallah, um, in the future weeks or months. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the topic. Um, I'm going to introduce the question that we have at hand. And inshallah, together with um, Irfan and all the brothers and sisters that are listening, inshallah, we can try and answer this question. Are you happy with that, Irfan? Perfect, perfect. I love it. Let's go. Okay. So, uh, let's get straight into the crux of the matter. Uh, if we look at the human being, we realize that our movement, um, our actions, um, whatever, everything that we do, everything we say, um, is dependent on one internal power. And that is the power to want. Okay? It's the power um, of motivation. It's, we do things because... We're motivated to do things. And this is how Allah has created us. And in fact, if you realize that this is something specific um, to the human being as well, that the human being has, unlike other creation, other, other creation has the ability to actually choose uh, the path that they want to go on and the destination they want to reach. Right? If you put, an, let's say, an apple seed in the ground, okay, you will get nothing but an apple tree. It's impossible to get oranges from an apple seed, right? However, when it comes to the human being, um, it's one of the creations that Allah has allowed to make their own path, to find their own course and their own destination. And this only happens through something you call irada in Arabic, okay? Or in English, you'll call it a willpower or a motivation. So you take yourself where you want to go, Okay. And this is extremely important, and perhaps one of the most foundation of all discussion that we have in human sciences, 
um, in psychology as well as in um, Islamic spirituality and and, um, and the growth of our of ourselves and our perfection. If I want to illustrate this, if you look at people around you, okay, um, whether those who were successful at university or those who were successful at work, they managed to build a business for themselves, a lot of wealth. Um, those who really worked hard to acquire um, a kind of level in society that is respectable. Um, the kind of people who, on the other side, climbed the, the, the ranks of spirituality and reached very high levels of understanding of Allah, of love of Allah, of um, uh, proximity to Allah. You realize that the um, common thing that all of them had is this want and this desire and this um, irada to reach there. They were motivated, okay, and they wanted to get there, and that's why they got there, right? Um, interesting, if you, if you look at self-help books today, right, if you go to any bookshop and you pick up a self-help book, you'll see that um, one of the common themes that we have is that you can do it, right? Just want it and you'll be able to do it. Those who read the book The Secret, for example, um, which I, I wouldn't recommend to read it, but if you have, then you remember, we're talking about if you want it, then you can. It all comes back to it all comes back to wanting it, and the uh, this internal power activating this in, internal power of um, I want to do it, I want to reach it. If we were to describe the uh, the true servants of Allah, the um, the servants who are seeking Allah, you will see that inside them there is a thirst. Right? If you can see them in the in their eyes, that they're and if you look at look at the biographies of the scholars and the companions, one of the things that they have is that they have a thirst inside them. They want, from the depth of their heart, they want the proximity of Allah. They want to understand Allah. They want to understand the truth. They're yearning for Allah. Right? This word yearning for Allah is specific to a thirst that we have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is um, something that is within us and essential for us to reach the destination. The human being is able to choose where he wants to go. And this depends on his want, his motivation, his thirst for um, getting to the destination. If you look at, um, very interesting, let me mention, mm -hmm. mention a point that perhaps I haven't thought about it. When I thought about it personally, it was a kind of a realization for me. I got confused for quite a few nights after this, but um, it was a realization for me that, you know, when we, when we make dua, when you ask Allah, oh Allah, I want, I don't know, the latest gadget, or um, I want this and that, or I want your proximity and I want your knowledge. Um, you know, there's no change in Allah that happens. when you ask Allah for something. It's not that Allah was not giving it to you, okay? And then when you asked Allah, when you made dua, Sorry, and suddenly Allah changed his mind and said, Can I interrupt uh, you? Know, you? This, guy is, this guy is praying to me, I'll, I'll, I'll give him, basically. There's no change in Allah. The mercy of Allah is always there. The generosity of Allah is always there. Dua brings change within me. Dua brings change within me it's like for example when it's raining okay and you want to get wet okay when you make dua it's not that the rain comes to you it's that you just remove the umbrella from top of your head and suddenly you're wet right the change happens within you not with Allah this is a very interesting point and this rain of Allah that is always there okay in some times and some occasions, the obstacle is very less. Obstacles are removed. And one of those moments are these three months, Rajab, Sha'aban, and Mahir Ramadan. Let me share a very interesting hadith, a very beautiful hadith. The Messenger of Allah says that, um, shahr Rajab, shahr Allah al -asab, that the month of Rajab was named the month of Allah with the, with the trait of being al-asab. Al-asab is like a, a, a rain that comes. You know, sometimes you have, you have different types of rains, right? One type of rain, when it comes, it comes like 
so much. You know, when it rains, you put your coat on and you put an umbrella on and you're sure you're not going to get wet, right? Because you've got an umbrella and everything. Sometimes it rains so much that whether you have an umbrella or not and how thick the umbrella might be, you are going to get wet, whether you like it or not. Right? So the Prophet says the month of Rajab is like this, that the rain of Allah is so great in this month that you are going to get wet. You have to be really arrogant and really bad, right? Which none of us are, alhamdulillah, to really escape this rain and to remain dry. Otherwise, all of us get wet, right? This rain of Rajab is very special. So the opportunity is there. The question is, okay, why am I still dry? The question is, why am I still thirsty? Why am I not thirsty? Why am I not feeling this thirst for this water that's coming so great and so strong? Yeah, basically, why aren't we yearning the love of Allah, for that? This is always there. I'll mention one introduction. Sorry, Sheikh, I was just saying the, that, yeah, it's why uh, we... The, the hadith says that... It's why we're just wondering, why aren't we yearning for that perfection? Why don't we want to be the best of Muslims? Why don't we want to be the best in our careers? I mean, it's it's a very community thing that where we... We're like, ah, oh, this much is enough, this much is enough, this much is enough. But at the same time, we need to be selfish, selfish in terms of that work on yourself and work to become a better person yourself and be the best that you can be. Sorry, Sheikh, you can continue. And same thing, high level, just like you mentioned, we need to aim really high. We need to be thirsty for even greater, greater things, right? Career is one thing. You want to aim for even greater than that. You want to reach for the sky. Right? Mankind is able to reach the sky, for sure. The question is, why are we not thirsty? Sometimes you wonder, why, why is it that we don't find in myself a thirst for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a thirst for the proximity of Allah, a thirst for finding out about the reality out there? Why am I not thirsty? That's the question I want to ask. Look at this beautiful hadith. Um, Allah SWT addresses Dawood Prophet Dawood and tells him that لَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْمُدْبِرُونَ عَنِّي كَيْفَ انْتِظَارِ لَهُمْ انْتِظَارِ لَهُمْ If those who turned away from me, those who are sinning, those who are not remembering me, if they knew the extent of my love for them, Allah says, huh? Allah says, if these people, if you and I, knew how much Allah loves us, and how much gentle I am towards them, and how much I'm yearning to forgive their sins, okay? He says, Lamatu shawqan. They would die out of love. Lamatu shawqan. If you and I were to realize how much Allah loves us, we would die out of this love. The question is, how do we realize? Why doesn't it bring a thirst in me? Why does it make me want to achieve his proximity? Sorry, Chef. Uh, I was just asking, so how do we realize? So this is exactly the question. How do we realize? How do we... How do we build this thirst, this thirst, right? What is this thirst anyways? And how do we make it happen? How do we really become thirsty? The scholars and those who reached the proximity of Allah, you would see that they would, they would spend day and night yearning for this proximity, yearning for knowledge of Allah, understanding Allah, the love of Allah, the generosity of Allah, the kindness of Allah. They would talk to Allah. Inside their hearts, there would be light blooming, right? They would feel this internal happiness, this happiness that you can't describe. And so we ask this question, why? Why am I not thirsty? Now, this is my question. I don't know if you have any, if any of the listeners have any suggestions or any comments, and please write them down somewhere. Um, 
Let's discuss them. Let's see them. And then we can take it forward. I've got about three to four answers that I'd like to share today um, to elaborate on this point of why am I thirsty. But I'd like to hear from people as well. So if anybody has any comments, I'll give you 30 seconds. If anybody has any comments, any questions, um, or and want to answer this question, do um, send in your thoughts. And inshallah, we can take it forward. Yeah, Chef, in those 30 seconds, um, I think there is a small delay between when I talk and when you hear me. So maybe I'll just signal to you when I want to talk. So it makes it a little bit, uh, it flows better, inshallah. No problem. Yeah, you'll or see you know, me put my hand this? up. Like this. <laughs> okay, a bit more polite. Yes, Sheikh. So as you continue, um, I think a burning question, which I feel like you could address during this why I'm not thirsty, is that what does our current social, um, our environment, you know, in terms of social media, lots of people are talking about so many different kinds of stuff and some of it real, some of it fake, but I'm sure that so many of the youth especially are on social media and are influenced by a lot of different people. And the top influencers are usually not very religion oriented. So therefore, it's, uh, it's misleading for a Muslim youth to be in such an environment. How do you think we could cope with that and uh, work towards um, getting thirsty and wanting to yearn uh, the proximity to Allah? Yeah, that's a good question. So I'll, I'll address that, inshallah, and I'll talk about it. Um, the issue of having so much information around us, um, and whether it's on, on our social media, whether it's on the TV, and we need to channel ourselves and try and swim through all these distractions and try and get to that real thirst that's within us. Inshallah, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it in a second. Perfect. Right. I'm seeing... So if any comments are coming, then please do share. I'll just mention um, one point right now. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm seeing a question in the chats. Um, how the question is saying that it's not really a question, it's more of a statement. It's saying attachment to materialism detaches one from spirituality what do you think about obviously we we live in a material world and is is it good to completely detach ourselves from everything or yes we we are living we are here to to become the best at the same time maybe enjoy a little bit what do you what do you think about that where's the enjoyment if we're going to detach completely from the material That's a very beautiful question. That's exactly uh, what we want to talk about today as well. It's a very, very precise question um, that, inshallah, I'll address as well. But it's, keep that point in mind. It's very, very precise. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another statement uh, saying that our environments are structured in a way that we're constantly aiming for otherworldly objectives. We did talk about objective. We did talk about goal setting in our last session, and I feel that that question is completely answered in that video. So, if you'd like to go check that video, I'm hundred percent sure that that question will be answered. Um, but also, Sheikh Magdad, you could answer and uh, share a lot uh, more on it. Is that does our, do our objectives have to meet social standard? Does it have to be that? society accepts our goals um, because we are not certainly goal-driven in terms of religion? See, goal, it depends what we mean by goal. We have long-term goals and short-term goals. We have small objectives and long-term objectives, right? Um, the ultimate objective and the ultimate goal that we have is to serve Allah, to become servants of Allah. And there is no more high-level perfection than that. Um, and all perfection lies in this, whether you want to acquire 
the highest level of knowledge or the highest level or trait of perfection. They are acquired because they belong to Allah. Allah gives them only to his servants. And the more servitude we um, engross ourselves in, it means the more we obey Allah in all the spheres of our life, um, the more we are able to attain those high levels of perfection. Now, this is irrespective of what people think and what people or society decides. However, in short-term goals, obviously, and objectives, um, you have to take care into, into consideration. For example, when you choose a career, when you choose a house, when you choose a spouse, a lot of the social considerations that are there, um, depending on what that particular objective is. But ultimately, the, the thing that everything should get back to and everything should lead us back to is the true servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One more. I think this is a really pressing this question. This comment, it's most very... human beings are thirsty. But... Sorry, Sheikh. Sorry, Sheikh. Sorry, Sheikh. Um, you speak first, then I will ask the question after. Sure. Now, I was just reading one of the comments saying that most human beings are thirsty, but the unfortunate ones direct their thirst in the wrong direction. This is a really nice point. It's a well well put. And inshallah, um, we'll address this as well in very briefly as well. It's a very good point. Back to you. Okay. It says here, um, someone has commented, you've got to pay the bills. Uh, you get so stressed out. You slip easily. Uh, you may rush in your namaz and the damage is done. It goes, it just carries on. Um, to be honest, I know a lot, lots and lots of people have the stress and I'm going to just give my personal view uh, before asking you, Sheikh. And that is that once you are goal-driven towards pleasing Allah, you are always content with with what you have. In terms of practical and, and working and that, I haven't reached there yet. I wouldn't be able to answer you. But in terms of setting a goal to please Allah, you will always be content with whatever you have. With whatever you get, whatever you do in life, as long as you are putting your 100%, as long as you make sure that you are setting, setting your goals and meeting your goals, that is the most important thing. Allah will, if you keep Allah by your side the whole time, honestly, everything will follow through. So maybe, Chef, you can expand on that as well, inshallah. I find neither you married nor are you working, right? No, Chef. Um, it's easy. It's easier said than done, obviously. But yeah, you're right. Um, you know, in our life, it's very interesting. I don't know. There's so many nice points that I'd like to, to share. But yeah, you're right. Um, one of the things that you realize is many of us, they, we, we don't enjoy this stress. We don't enjoy um, this constant um, trying to meet the bills and pay the bills and take care of this, this issue and that issue. And our life is just driven by all these things, right? And within us, there's something that's calling out. It's like, can you just stop for a second and get back on track, right? And this is exactly that thirst that's within us. That's calling out the saying that I'm not quenching my thirst. Where is my thirst? There's something else that I'm seeking. Unfortunately, all these things are distracting me. Now, the question is, what shall we do? What's the practical action plan to do in this, in this case? Now, let, let, me, let, me, let me elaborate on a few points um, and try to answer this question um, in, a, in, in a, few, a few important points. The first one I'd like to mention and the first reason why we're not thirsty, okay, is because we don't know there is water. Now, let me say this at first, okay, and I'll, I'll correct it in a bit. One of the reasons why someone might not be thirsty is because they don't know there is water. Right now, my daughter is around four, right? If I tell her, Fatima, um, let's go shopping. Let's buy the latest bag, handbag, uh, the most beautiful shoes and fashion do you really want to do it? You know what Fatima will tell me? She'll just look at me and say, what are you talking about? She has absolutely no thirst okay, for all these really nice things that other people would enjoy. 
And the reason being is because she has no idea. She has no knowledge of what I'm talking about, right? One very important thing about being thirsty is having knowledge of the water, having knowledge of the treasure that's out there. If you don't know there is a treasure, then you can't be thirsty, right? It's impossible to be thirsty for something that you don't know about. However, when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way we've been created, brothers and sisters, this is a very valuable point. Yeah, The way we've been created, the hadith tells us that um, the companion asks um, the fifth holy imam, Abu Ja'far, he says, he asks about the verse of fitr. He says, fitrat Allah, fitrat Allah, lati fatar nasa alayha. About this verse, what does it mean? The imam tells him, Allah has created the human being in a way that they know, they have knowledge that Allah is their Rabb. Allah is the one who provides them. And then he says, the Imam says, If this wasn't the case, they wouldn't have known what to reply when Allah asked them, Who is your Lord? In other words, within us, we've been created in a way that we have this knowledge of Allah. We have this thirst within us. Every single human being, by the very fact that they are a human being, they're thirsty. However, however, this thirst is very, um, how do I say, it? it's not very clear. Right? It's like when Irfan, for example, just loses me for a second, he can't hear me, you can see in his face, like, he's getting confused, right? He's not really sure, exactly sure what I'm saying. That's the kind of thing, basically. Our knowledge and our thirst for Allah at the very beginning is very shallow, right? It's not very clear. I know I want something. I know there is a Lord, okay? But I don't know exactly much about Him. So, practical point number one, right? We want to draw action plans and practical points out of this, right? The fact, the first practical point is that we need to be learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be learning about the, the religion of Allah, be trying to understand who Allah is. Knowledge is fundamental for us to be thirsty. We can never be thirsty if we don't know. In any path of spirituality, any path of gain proximity to Allah, okay, it cannot happen unless we have more understanding, right? Sometimes children come to you and they ask you questions, right? And you realize that the question is very shallow. The question is very, it's a very simple question. You feel like there's telling them there's so much more out there. But you just wait for them to grow a little bit, increase their knowledge a little bit so you can share those very beautiful points, very beautiful understanding that you have. So it's very important that we increase our knowledge. The reason why we're not thirsty is because we don't know. We don't know about Allah. We don't know about this religion. We know it to a very little limit that we have, and that's enough to be thirsty. But this thirst is not very clear. So point number one is that the reason why I'm not thirsty is because I don't know about the water. If you don't know about the water, you'll never be thirsty. If you didn't know that there was such a thing as, I don't know, a, a really very beautiful, tasty chocolate cake, for example, you'll be thirsty for it. You have to have knowledge about it. Once you know about it, then suddenly your mouth starts watering, right? If I start right now describing to you a nice chocolate cake or, I don't know, a nice mushkaki that was made recently, you'll get your mouth to watery, right? Yeah. The reason is because knowledge comes in play. So practical point number one is that we need to increase our knowledge. In our timetable, especially this month of Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, you know, I remember when I was when I was young. Well, I'm still young, but when I was younger, um, in my Ramadan, you feel, like, you feel like you don't you're not progressing anything, right? You're not gaining much from this holy month. And I realized that one of the reasons because there's a, there is like a a barrier that stops me from increasing more because I don't know what else I want, right? I don't know what I want. Sometimes you ask Allah, oh Allah, give me whatever you think is best. I don't know. That's a very good du'a for sure. 
but also tell sometimes oh Allah also increase my knowledge make me understand a bit more the more I understand the more I'll be thirsty so this was point number one that in our timetable brothers and sisters please I beg you in your timetable make sure you have time to read to listen to ponder to think there shouldn't be a single day that passes without increasing a little bit of your knowledge it, it should be an embarrassment that you go to sleep at night, okay, and you haven't read anything. Sure. Um, I just seen a comment in the chat and I want to say it to you. Um, someone has said that Allah bless you, mashallah, well done, youth, sheikh, for youths. Um, so yes, you, you are young. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure that... Um, we, we will benefit so much from what you talk about. And as you go on, I think the dying and the burning question is, is the how. We know, yes, we know now that, yes, we're, we may not be thirsty. We may, may need to, um, for example, uh, read more. So now how do we get into doing those actions? Because there isn't that motivation to, to go towards it. So you start slow in terms of how to how to increase your knowledge. Now we can talk about this in a, in a separate discussion as well. But just very briefly, um, first and foremost, we need to put time aside, right? Make 10 minutes of your day. 10 minutes is not much, right? 10 minutes of your day, schedule it in. Say, for example, from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., 6, 6 p.m. to 6.15 p.m., right? Or I don't know, sometime in the morning. Make some time to read something. It can be... Something very simple. For example, it can be stories of the ulama. If you go on alislam.org, al-islam.org, you'll find a lot of books, a lot of biographies about some of the ulama that we had, or stories and of the Ahlul Bayt, for example. Okay, very easy read, simple read. It doesn't take too much, and everybody loves stories at the end of the day, right? Slowly, slowly, you start increasing your knowledge, and then you have questions that are asked in your mind. You start asking questions, then you start realizing that I need to answer those questions, and you do a bit more research. So the first point is that make some time. Secondly, find what to read, what you like to read, what's important to read. Consult a scholar about this. It's very important. Make a program for yourself to increase knowledge. Take part in a course. You have a lot of online courses these, day, these days. Find a course that's reliable, that's beneficial for you, that's something that you like. Do something. I don't know. Shake up, basically. Shake and do something to make sure that you are on the path of learning. Inshallah, we'll talk about how in more details in other sessions, Inshallah. I'd like to move on to a second, a second answer now. So the first answer was about knowledge. Um, whilst the comments are coming and the questions are coming, I'd like to tackle the second point that some of the brothers and sisters mentioned before as well. The second reason why we are not thirsty or that we don't feel thirsty is because we're distracted. This is probably one of the most important reasons why we're not thirsty is because we're distracted. You know, sometimes, I don't know if it happens to you or not, you get hurt, blood starts pouring, but you don't feel any pain. Until maybe 10 minutes later or half an hour later, you realize, oh my God, I'm bleeding. And suddenly you're like, ow, it's hurting as well. Right? Or I'll tell you about my kids, right? When they play, they play, they play, they play. And after like hours of playing, you tell them, okay, now it's time to study or it's time to go to bed. Suddenly like, oh, dad, I'm really hungry. Baba, you've been playing the whole time. You weren't hungry. Now it's time to study or to go to sleep. Suddenly you feel hungry. What just happened? The reason is because play distracted them from this hunger that they had. They were hungry the whole time. It wasn't that they weren't hungry. They were thirsty. But because they were playing, they got distracted. And then they didn't feel their hunger. And the moment you remove this play... What happened is that they suddenly realized, oh my God, I'm actually hungry and thirsty. So they, re they came back to their sense and they realized that I'm hungry. So play makes us distracted. You know, sometimes sadly, actually, um, many of us, we do this. Um, yeah, when you have a bad day, a lot of us have bad days, including myself. Something happened, somebody said something to you. You felt really bad. You felt upset, offended. Okay. Or for example, you got angry at somebody and you said something really bad to somebody. Now you regret it. I wish I hadn't said this. Why did I say this to this person? I made them unhappy. 
I felt angry. Now you feel remorse. You feel regretful. Or something bad happened. You had a bad day. Okay? You know, sometimes what, what we do in those situations, we sit on the TV. And you watch a movie. Why? Just to distract yourself. Just to forget about it. I've had a long day. I just want to forget about it. I just want to get distracted from it. Rather than solving the problem, rather than trying to understand what's happening, what we do is that we just make ourselves distracted. We put ourselves into distraction just to remove that understanding of the reality. In fact, again, a very crucial point, a, a key point. The world, the purpose of the world is to distract us. If right now you open the dictionary, open the Islamic dictionary and find out the word dunya or the world or the word world, okay? It's defined as that which distracts you. The Quran says, Inna ja'alna ma ala al-arab zinatan laha. That we have made whatever is on the earth beautiful and attractive. Why? So that we may test and see who amongst you are doing good action. In other words, Allah has made this world a distraction purposely. Purposely to make us forget, to make us um, ignore this thirst. Now you ask me, why did Allah do this? What's the reason why Allah... It's actually purposely making us distracted. The reason is because he wants to see who really is thirsty. Who actually really wants it. It's to create even more thirst. You know when these, my children, when they were hungry and they were playing and they were forgetting about their hunger, when they really, I removed the plate two hours later, the hunger was intense. They were really hungry. Allah wants to see who will remain thirsty and increase their thirst through this world, through these distractions, and not get distracted. Yes, Sheikh. If I would interrupt you a little bit. Um, how is it that, you know, okay, a test. We study we learn about it, we do the test, obviously, obviously we, we don't know what exactly is coming in the test, but we have a general idea based on what we've studied, and then we see whether we've passed or failed. How are we able to study this test? How, how are we able to make sure that we pass this dunya, you know, that we aren't distracted, that we are able to bypass this distraction and just concentrate on the pleasantries that are going that are going to come to us in the future after in the afterlife inshallah very good question Irfan. let me answer to the verse of the quran the quran tells us follow your role models let me tell you about these role models what they do that look at these people okay what they do these people they're referring to the ahlul bayt over here that the world so um, doing business and transaction and interacting with people does never distract them from the zikr of Allah, from the remembrance of Allah. Mm -hmm. Amir al-Mu'minin, he used to go to the market. He used to buy things and sell things. He used to sit with people and have cakes and sweet things. But he never got distracted. The key, come back to the question that somebody asked at the beginning of, of the of the of the discussion. The key is not to run away from this world. The key is not to stop our interaction with this world. This is not what we're supposed to do. The key is to what? To go through this world and not get distracted by it. See through it, not at it. You know, when you look at a mirror, there's two ways to look at a mirror. I used to play this game when I was young. You look at the mirror, sometimes you look at the mirror itself, and sometimes you look at the mirror when it's reflecting your image. It's very interesting. Yeah? You can do this. Like, I found that very, very amazing. <laughs> you spend hours on this. You look at the mirror, and you're just looking at the mirror. That's all you're looking at. And then you're looking at the mirror, but then you're looking at yourself. There's two ways of looking at things. right? The dunya, you can look at it, and you can look at it for the sake of the dunya itself. 
Then you get engrossed, you get distracted. Allah says, Baba, I created the world. I want you to use the world to see the reflection of it, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You looked at the world in the wrong way. Both of us have to look at the world. It's how you look at the world. This is the key. The reason why we're not thirsty is because we're not re re looking at the reflection. We're looking at the world for itself and then we get distracted in the mirror. We're like, you know, when you go to the, when you go to, um, the mirror shop, that's when you look at the mirror and say, oh, this is a nice mirror. It doesn't have any cracks. The frame of the mirror is nice. But when you take this mirror at home and you use it to look at how nice your beard looks, if your mama is wearing nicely or not, okay? I don't spend time looking at whether the mirror is cracked, is the mirror dirty or not, my frame is nice. No, there you're supposed to look at the mirror and achieve what you're supposed to do with the mirror, which is to look at the reflection. So, question, practical question that's been asked as well. How do we do this? How do we avoid these distractions, right? Now you wanted to ask the house, right, Ifan? So let me tell you how. Two points. I'm going to mention two points only. Point number one. Point number one is that we need to make sure that we abide by that which is wajib and avoid that which is haram. This is fundamental. This is the key to any progress or any growth. Why? Because this, when you do your wajibat and you avoid your, your, the haram acts, okay, what actually you're doing is that you're telling Allah, I want to be a servant. I'm not going to listen to other than you. That's what wajib says, right? With this intention, with this attention as well, attention in intention, that you, you pray namaz and say, I'm praying because you said so. I'm fasting because you said so. I'm not getting angry right now. And I'm not lying. And I'm not teasing this person. I'm not talking behind this person's back, although it's very fun to talk about them right now. But I'm not going to do so. I know it's very nice to look at this Naam Nahram, for example, right now, but I'm not going to do so because you said. When you do this, what happens is that slowly, slowly, you're trying to look at the world as a servant and slowly slowly what happens it sinks in your heart that you are actually thirsty because you've now turned your heart towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a servant this is these are keys these are like golden keys if we were to abide by these you know they say that a lot of the people a lot of people went to Ayatollah Bahjat Allah bless his soul Ayatollah Bahjat and they would go to him and say Ajara, please give us some advice for spirituality. And he would tell them, these people might have been praying spring Sato late and doing all sorts of amazing things. And Ayatollah Abdashi would tell them that my advice to you is that you avoid committing sins. And these people, you know, what they would say, ah, Ayatollah Abdashi doesn't want to give an answer. He just tells us to go away, basically. This is, what kind of answer is this? not realizing that this is the answer. That Ayatollah Bajah doesn't speak other than the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. And this is what we're being taught. This is the key. You avoid that which is haram and slowly, slowly, what happens is that you become thirsty for Allah. Naturally, it's, it's, it's cause and effect. It's 2 plus 3 equals 4. Guaranteed. Okay? You do your wajib and you avoid your haram. Suddenly, within your heart, you will feel thirsty for Allah's one. Why? Because you slowly started to becoming a servant. That's point number one. Point number two, and I'm rushing. Point number two is that we need to really lower the amount of distractions in our lives. I don't know how much time you spend your fun on, on social media and playing PlayStation 4 and watching the Premier League and what else do you do? Right? All these distractions, they're good. Okay. Go for it. However, however, we need to reduce them in this way. Let me suggest a way. The way that the Ahl Bayt have taught us and the ulama have taught us. That make sure you have during the day a time where you stop all distractions and you keep time just for yourself and Allah. Let it be five minutes at the beginning. 
10 minutes, no more than five, 10 minutes. But then you sit down and you switch off your phone and you switch off the TV and you close the door. Nobody's going to distract you right now. And you don't think about anything else right now. Nobody's going to die. Don't worry. Okay. In those five minutes, nobody's going to die. This, the, the, the earth's not going to fall apart. Do not worry. You just need to make sure that you removed all distractions. And it's between you and Allah. Like they would say, imagine, imagine if right now, play this game. It's a nice game to play. Imagine right now a person comes, okay, and takes away your phone from you, takes away your television, your book, your laptop, everything, everything. It's you and he throws you in an island. It's you and nothing. There's nothing around you. Nothing. I advise you to think, try this game. Yeah, try when you're home, when you have those five minutes with Allah, tell yourself, imagine this happens to me. Okay. The police comes or somebody comes and they take everything away from me. They put me in an island all alone. Between me and Allah now. Now start talking to Allah. Suddenly you realize that, that I've got so much to say. I've got so much to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Suddenly there's a thirst within you. And you realize that the reason why I wasn't feeling this thirst is because I was constantly distracted. You know, in bracket, something I hate about, I'll, I'll mention this point and I'll come to your phone. The something I hate about my phone is that there's this light at the top. I don't know you guys, if you guys have it or not. My, there's a light at the top. You know, when you get a message, I've switched off the, it doesn't have any sound, yeah? But there's a light at the top of the phone. You know, when the message comes, the light is there. And whether you like it or not, my eyes is always looking for that light, right? I could be, the phone could be on the other side of the table. But as soon as that small red light just goes on that, the message has come and you get distracted. Why is it the case? Why can't we just switch off our phone and get stop these distractions just for five, ten minutes? And have um, some time with ourselves. Now, there's something we need to do in those five minutes, which I'll mention after Irfan dis um, distracted me. <laughs> Thank you, Sheikh. Um, first of all, uh, if obviously we've gone a little bit over time, but if you don't mind, we can continue maybe for a few more minutes. Um, at the my question now is that you said that, you know what, start with five minutes, start with 10 minutes, and then you progress. Um, let's say I'm someone who doesn't pray my namaz and I, this thirst comes to me, you know, some inspiration, some, something comes to me and I want to start. Everyone says, you know, it's overwhelming to immediately going into praying all five namazes uh, for the people I know who have talked to who weren't praying. And... So do you feel it's okay? In Salat is wajib. It is wajib. Is it okay to start one at a time? Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, like that and progress in terms of a wajibat? Or is it something that you just have to push through and do? Um, it, it depends on the person. I'm not... I'm going to give a yes or no answer of yes. So depending on the person, they can consult a scholar specifically. Uh, I, would, um, I won't go through it myself. Mm. Sp cons consult somebody who knows. You can ask me later or um, ask somebody else later. However, um, this point is valid. That when you start, for example, someone who hasn't prayed, they want to start praying, start very for very quick prayers. Don't do any of the mustahabat, right? You know, a Zohar Salah, it's a four akasala, enough patience inside you to just for three, four minutes, right? Um, so it's not that heavy. Um, remove all the mustahabat from your salah, just do that which is wajib. And promise you, if, if you really do a, a real istighfar, a real repentance, and you tell Allah that I want to change and I want to start praying, okay? Your heart will tell you that I'm thirsty and you feel this thirst in your heart. The, the key is just to really want it. That was my next point, is that we don't want this. That's the problem. Our thirst, we don't, we're not ready to accept we're thirsty. The moment we accept that we're thirsty and we want to really claim ourselves to be thirsty, then really wonders will happen. Wonders will happen. Pick up those du'as that we have. Look at how the Ahlul Bayt would speak to Allah. They would put themselves in the most lowest of, of slaves and beggars. The lowest of beggars. We need to be begging. Thirsty is to beg. 
maybe at this point we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, we'll open it later on. Um, let me just quickly finish because time's over. When, you all, when you're all alone and you want to spend some time with Allah, five minutes a day, a um, couple of things to do. One of them is obviously to reflect on your actions. The good things that you've done, the opportunities that Allah has given you, thank Allah for it. And the bad things that you might have done, ask Allah for forgiveness for those things. Um, this is thinking about one's action is very, very important. You need to review your day, basically. Review your day and see what you did good, what you, see, what you did bad. Um, try and change. This, these, these thoughts, if you keep doing them for a long period of time, over, over weeks and months, they will bring a lot of change in, 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 in you and create this thirst. Um, perfect, Sheikh. Um, two more points, two more points to go through and then we, we close, inshallah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I just want to... There's another question here that's come and uh, I just want to address it quickly. It's a request for any specific books and um, from contemporary scholars. I think in terms of that question um, to the person who has asked is that if you do get in touch with Sheikh personally, and I'm sure he'd be willing to uh, give his contact to his email or something, you could ask him for that, uh, for a list. You could start reading, you could consult Sheikh if he doesn't mind, obviously. Um, the other question is, how can one create inner foresight in order to see through the distractions in this dunya? I feel like you have answered you have answered it a bit, but maybe I can add something onto the question, which is what you were just saying, um, muhasaba, you know, to self, to introspect, to see where you have reached as a person. Um, what are, uh, maybe share a few good examples to help us introspect, help us um, develop this sort of inner foresight? So regarding the first question, um, I'll mention a couple of books. Um, the first book, which I personally like a lot, is it's called um, it's called The Lantern, I think. It's called As Siraj, um, and it's by Aitlab Bahrani. It's available on alislam.org as a PDF. Um, it's called it's. Um, it's, it's, it's called Asiraj, it's by Ayatollah Bahrani. It's a very interesting book. And it's one of those books that creates thirst, basically, because it gives you practical tips and also gives you a lot of motivation. It's a very inspirational book. It's a very nice book. And the author is a, um, is a very um, a, a renowned scholar, basically. Uh, don't get confused with another book, um, which is called um, The Lantern as well, which is by Imam Sadiq al I'm not talking about that book. I'm talking about Ayatollah Bahrani's book. That's one book. There's another book um, by Aitra Misbah Yazdi, Marhum, who passed away just recently. Um, he's got a lot of books on the topic. One of the books that's been translated in English is um, um, Self-Development for Self-Purification or something like that. It's available on alislam.org. It's published by um, Ahl Bayt Wal Assembly. Um, that's also a very good book. There's another book by Aitra Ibrahim Amini. Um, um, the book is called Self-Building that also is a very interesting book um, Self-Building um, that's also another very interesting book these are, these are first level books but, uh, once we've read them then we can move on to other books as well regarding the second question it all goes back to um, one go back to our wajib and haram okay that constantly we need to make sure that we are watching our actions and we're taking care of that which is wajib and avoiding that which is haram. This is how we pass through the dunya. We want to look past the dunya. Okay, we need to make sure that first our wajib and actions and our haram actions are taken care of. And whilst we're doing this, we pay attention to the why, the reason why as well, right? You say, because I want to become a servant of Allah. Once you do this and slowly so what happens is that distractions turn into remembrance, right? We talk about the verse that says distraction, and then we talk about the verse that says dhikr, right? Distraction turned into dhikr. 
the same things that before would distract you, now they, they remind you. Sometimes you go to the local uh, mushkaki place and you have a nice barbecue chicken, a nice nundu, for example. Okay. And sometimes you have it because you just love it. It tastes so nice. I've greed towards it. This is a distraction. The same mushkaki, the same barbecue, it tastes the same. But if you remember Allah, if you're in the state of remembrance, you still enjoy it. But you're enjoying it with the remembrance of Allah. It's not distracting you from Allah. You're seeing it differently. On the appearance face value, if somebody will look at you from outside, okay, if your friends were looking at you, they're seeing you, the same person, okay, eating the same thing in the same way. But your mind and your heart is somewhere else, right? You're using this barbecue chicken to remember Allah, to thank Allah, to enjoy it in a, in a, in a different way. Now, obviously, this happens when you're taking care of yourself, that you're actually paying attention to what you're supposed to be doing. And you're balanced, right? You've got balanced. You've taken time out to think for yourself. You've got time to reflect upon your actions. And also, when you're outside, you've got time to work. You've got time to do exercise. You've got time to study and gain knowledge, etc., etc. Basically, you're slowly, slowly increasing your thirst. The more thirst you get, the more you remember Allah. There are a lot of points other than I wanted to mention um, that will help us answer, answer this question. Misha will leave them for another time. Um, thank you, Sheikh. Um, yes, this is definitely only a part one. I'm sure that we're going to have a part two, inshallah, because there is a lot more to discuss. And I think we can close it here, inshallah, and definitely have a part two. Because I feel this is a very pressing topic and something I'm sure a lot of the viewers are um, enjoying. And so before we close, Sheikh, uh, if you'd like to say anything to uh, before I wrap it up, inshallah. I just pray to Allah, inshallah, that we are able to um, acquire this thirst and that we work on ourselves, especially the month of Rajab. Brothers, just don't take this lightly. There's only maybe... 20 days left, right, for this month of Rajab. We need to make the most of it. It's, it's like, as I, you could say, it, it's now or never, right? Let's take the most of it. Let's pray for one another. Let's abide by the, the instructions that the Ahl have given us for this month. Inshallah, we can, the aim is to become thirsty. Let's, let's really be thirsty. By the end of Rajab, we should be dying of thirst. Thank you so much, Sheikh. Um, on behalf of um, Africa Youth Network and every single one of the users who joined in. Uh, thank you so much. I personally have learned quite a lot and I am going to be thirsty now. I want to, I want to be thirsty. I want to make sure that I'm the best I can be and I'm sure everyone wants to be the best they can be, inshallah. So thank you so much, Sheikh. Inshallah, see you for part two soon. Um, take care and thank you so much to every single one of the viewers who have joined in. Uh, Ma salam. Uh, have a good day, a good evening, insha'Allah, and we meet next time. Khuda Hafiz.